Dr. Rakshanda Jalil also runs an organization called Hindustani Awaz devoted to the popularization of Hindi, Urdu literature and culture. She has participated and presented her papers in more than 50 seminars, conferences of national and international level. Media is my day and this is my day and this is my day and this is my day. And you have told me about three of them, three of them. लोग हैं रक्षा जी आप सब जानते हैं बहुत ही उम्दा अनुवाद इन्होंने किए हैं लिखती भी हैं बोधि सत्व हिंदी के माने हुए कवि हैं छेल साहब सिनेमा से जुड़े रहे हैं इनकी फिल्म को राष्ट्रीय अवार्ड मिल चुका है जो सब्जेक्ट है विषय है वो निश्चय बहुत दिलचस्प है क्योंकि मीडिया के साथ में साहित्य का रिश्ता दोनों शब्द का इस्तेमाल करते हैं सिनेमा के मामले में तो आप बगैर शब्द के भी काम चला सकते हैं जो मैंने सचित्र की फिल्म का उदाहरण दिया भी था और उस वक्त जब बोलने वाली फिल्में बनने लगी थीं, उस वक्त जो उस वक्त उन्होंने वो फिल्म बनाई जिसमें कोई संवाद नहीं था, बल्कि प्रेमचंद ने दिलचस्प बात लिखी है, बंबई से लौटने के बाद उन्होंने कहा है कि ये जो बोलने वाली फिल्में बनने लग गई हैं, ये बहुत बड़ा अपने आप में एक समाज में अनपढ़ लोग भी बहुत होते हैं और पता नहीं क्या क्या उन्होंने दलीलें दी उन्होंने कहा कि जो है साइलेंट मूवीज बननी चाहिए वो दौर अच्छा था बोलने वाली फिल्में जो हैं सवाक फिल्में ये उन्होंने लौटने के बाद में लेख लिखा था तो सिनेमा का काम तो शब्द के बगैर चलता है लेकिन मीडिया का नहीं चल सकता टीवी का नहीं चल सकता और जिनके बारे में यहाँ पे बात करने के लिए लोग मौजूद है लेकिन मीडिया के साथ में रिश्ता जो है साहित्य का वो काफी पुराना है और भाषाओं का मुझे पता नहीं लेकिन हिंदी में तो आप कल्पना नहीं कर सकते कि आप हिंदी के सबसे बड़े साहित्यकारों में अग्गे का नाम आता है और अगर अग्गे न हो तो हिंदी पत्रकारिता कहाँ पे होती रघुवीर शाह नहीं होते तो पत्रकारिता कहाँ पे होती विद्या निवास मिश्र है आपको ढेरों नाम मिलेंगे जिनका जो चोली दामन का साथ मीडिया के साथ में रहा है लेकिन मीडिया अब जो हो गया है मीडिया का एक हिस्सा होते हुए भी मुझको लगता है कि अब जिस तरह का मीडिया है उसमें शब्दों की वक्त जो है वो घटती चली जा रही है इसको सुनते वक्त आपको शायद ये लगे कि इसमें कुछ चीजें बहुत ही अराइव स्टेटमेंट है लेकिन ये स्वीपिंग स्टेटमेंट हो सकता है लगे क्योंकि मैं बहुत सी चीजों को एक साथ 10-15 मिनट में कहने की कोशिश कर रही हूँ लेकिन मैं यकीन दिलाना चाहूंगी कि ये असल में स्वीपिंग स्टेटमेंट्स नहीं है बट इनके पीछे कुछ थोड़ी बहुत सोच रही है और अगर मौका मिलेगा बाद में सवाल जवाब का तो मैं इन चीजों को इलेबोरेट कर पाऊंगी द मीडियम इज द मैसेज डिक्लेयर मार्शल मैकलोहन कंसिडर टू बी द फादर ऑफ द मॉडर्न मीडिया स्टडीज McLuhan prophesied the dawn of the electronic age and the advent of the global village where distances would shrink, where communication technology would link members of different communities across the globe and where values, beliefs and attitudes would be learned through a mass medium in order to avoid confusion. But when we go back to an older age, we had the Psalms which told us that we become what we behold. In this modern world dominated by the media, be it in the form of television, radio, um, internet, what have you, and driven by technology, these words, we become what we behold, have acquired an altogether different and I would even say sinister meaning. Do we really wish to become what we behold? That is the question I wish to ask you today. The fact is, more people watch television, read newspapers, go to the movies, and partake of popular culture in some form or the other than read books. Fewer still write books. Yet there is a field of study which is devoted to the relationship between literature and the other arts. Called semiotics, it concerns itself with the study of science, and these science could be both verbal and non-verbal. Uh, unequal though this relationship is between media and, cult and, and uh, uh, literature, few would doubt that there is nevertheless a convergence. Now the extent of that convergence is another point, I don't want to get into that. Um, for the purpose of this paper, what I want to do first is to just briefly outline the common ground between media and literature, list the differences which are actually much more, and then possibly go on to some related subjects. Literature, literally meaning things made from letters, concerns itself with ideas and not images, quite unlike the media. It concerns itself with thoughts and not messages. 
yet communication is a vital common ground to both. For literature, no matter how subjective, personal, idiosyncratic is nevertheless a means of communication. Also, the spread of written texts has been made possible through a form of media, which is namely printing and publishing. We've already had a session devoted to that, so I won't get into that aspect of media. For this purpose, I'll just talk basically about media to mean, largely to mean journalism. Now for the differences. Some forms of literature, such as those influenced by the French symbolists, uh, it has encouraged an extreme independence of thought and a deliberate use of obscure and even ambiguous images and diction. <coughs> literature has traditionally witnessed debates such as art for art's sake or art for life's sake. Now, media, on the other hand, cannot afford any such ambiguity or obscurity. Media relies upon clarity of communication and frowns upon extreme subjectivity or obscurity. یہ الگ بات ہے کہ آج کے دور میں ارب ناب کو اسلامی قسم کے جو جرنلس ہیں وہ ایک فارم آف سبجیکٹیوٹی ضرور پریکٹس کرتے ہیں لیکن ہم اگر ایک آئیڈیل ورلڈ کی بات کرتے ہیں تو میڈیا آئیڈیلی فراؤنس اپان سبجیکٹیوٹی لٹریچر اسپیشلی سوشلی انگیج اینڈ پرپوسو لٹریچر گیوز وائس ٹو ہوسٹ آف ایشوز دے کڈ بی جینڈر جسٹس پاورٹی ایلیویشن ایکسپلائٹیشن اینڈ سو آن اینڈ سو فور Now, the media, and this is what I meant by a sweeping, sweeping statement. I hope you will not take it as a sweeping statement, and I'd like to assure you that this is something that I have been worrying and thinking about for some time. I feel that the media aligns itself with those forces of change, but since it has neither the memory nor the imagination, it cannot make known those changes in a way that literature can. Also, media can propagate or disseminate knowledge and ideas, but cannot give birth to them. So, while media affects or even alters perception, the effect of literature is felt at a far more, um, you can say, subliminal level, which is at the level of ideas and thoughts and opinions. Now, having made this brief uh, sort of outline, the differences and the similarities, I want to come on a few other points, and I'll try and be as brief as I can here. Uh, but I do want to make a lament, first of all, which is about the shrinking space that is available to literature in the media, be it print or electronic. At a time when the profile of the media is being transformed from reporting to analysis to passing judgment, we are witnessing a sea change in the role of the media itself. And in this changing mahol, as it were, coverage of literature is only one of the several casualties. Um, most of you would remember a time when the Hindu, for example, used to have the book review section, the literary supplement, uh, literary, literary review section, as it's called. It used to be a 16-page supplement. It used to come twice a month. It has been reduced to the first Sunday of every month. There are many of you in this audience, I'm sure, who would remember Sham Lalji and his uh, column, Life and Letters. Now, uh, I am hard-pressed to find anything that is comparable with uh, Life and Letters in the public domain, in the major English newspapers, and frankly, with all due apologies to the journalists present here, I am hard-pressed to find somebody in the major English language newspapers of the caliber of Shamlalji, and the kind of, he's been described as one of the most erudite of newspaper editors, and we don't see that sort of erudition, we don't see that sort of presence of literature in, uh, in major newspapers. Now, there are a couple of other things also. The op-ed page itself of most major, major newspapers has been leached, has been sort of, um, the, 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 uh, the literary content that once was a given. Also, possibly one another reason is that those of you here who've come out through the conventional schools of journalism would remember something called long-form journalism which again is a casualty of these present times, where the print per inch square of uh, revenue that is made by advertisements is broken by the advertisements. So, you don't have to be small enough to be You don't have the leisure and the time to build your story. Now, in the case of the electronic media, the situation is even more grim. Um, I think some of you will remember that Sunil Sethi had a program called Just Books, which used to come on NDTV. It has been shunted to NDTV profit. That in itself says something. It's again not on prime time. It's sort of hidden somewhere. And just books 
Now, oddly enough, while the coverage of literature per se has declined on the whole, thanks to the exploding mass media, more and more people know about emerging literature. Social media in particular, Twitter and uh, the, 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 the Facebook and so on, they have, um, they treat the arrival of a new writer or a new literary event as a news event. And this is in, in interesting and, and important. Um, and especially if the writer is a controversial writer, then all the more reason that, uh, uh, that the arrival of a book or the arrival of a new literary voice then becomes a, a news event. It becomes a breaking news as it were. Now, again, um, you, I hope you will agree with me when I, when I say that more people have possibly in this country um, read about or heard about Salman Rushdie and Taslima Nasreen and fewer have uh, actually read them. Possibly because they are, they are uh, seen as controversial names, you hear about them in the news. And so, and a related, uh, 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 something, something that adds up to my argument would also be the fact that uh, Ashish Nandi's comments in a recent lit fest uh, came, uh, they were placed in the public domain in such a manner, they were, they were sort of placed before in us in such a provocative manner that many people who had, who were not familiar with the body of work of Ashish Nandi, who is an extremely respected, respected uh, academic, uh, and possibly these people had not read him or not heard about him. They saw that context because it was breaking news and so that context was wrenched out of its moorings and placed before us as a kind of a uh, provocative news item. And so people reacted to it as a news item rather than to uh, it as a sort of a thought out co comment made by a sociologist. The role of technology in both literature and media cannot be ignored. Mm -hmm. For instance, the boom of new media, especially social media and the microblogging sites, influence writing styles and to an extent shape the content of the written word. Um, again, you would recall that uh, just as once the arrival of the telegraph made brevity and compactness virtues for the, um, the stories that we read in newspapers, now it's a totally different ball game. With the arrival of the internet, Suddenly, the access of the writer has increased. The reach of the writer has increased. And it's given you that many more new incentives to write. Conversely, it has removed the, this, this access to technology. It has removed the constraints of quality. And so we are also exposed to some very dodgy, some very dubious kind of literature. And there is absolutely no sort of, as it were, quality control. There's no monitoring in that sense. Uh, possibly a historical perspective is important. Um do you have to wait for 5 minutes? I said, then I'm going to skip all of this. I'll just um, share a personal memory. I went to G. I went to a mainstream school, factory school, Delhi public school, where there was Angrezi medium, but our librarian was Hindi journals in front of us, and we encouraged them to read Hindi. मेरा अपना इंट्रोडक्शन धर्मयुग के जरिए शिवानी की कहानियों से हुआ तो आई एम बिल्डिंग दिस एज एन आर्ग्यूमेंट लेकिन मेरे पास वक्त नहीं है अभी उस बात में जाने का लेकिन मैं कहना ये चाहूंगी कि एक वक्त था जब पॉपुलर लिटरेरी जर्नल्स जो थे वो डिस्टिंक्शन uh, जो आज हमारे सामने लिटरेचर और कल्चर स्पेशली लिटरेचर और पॉपुलर कल्चर के बीच में है ये डिस्टिंक्शन इतनी शार्प नहीं थी मेरे ख्याल से कादम्बिनी धर्मयोग साप्ताहिक हिंदुस्तान इस कस्म के जो जर्नल्स थे इन्होंने उस डिस्टिंक्शन को ब्लर कर दिया था उर्दू में 20वीं सदी था जिसमें कृष्ण चंद्र भी कहानियां लिखते थे शमा और बानो थे जिसमें फिल्मी गॉसिप के साथ-साथ आपको कोई ना कोई अच्छी कहानी मिल जाया करती थी अब ऐसा नहीं होता है हिंदी का हाल तो खराब है लेकिन उर्दू का मेरे ख्याल से उससे भी ज्यादा खराब हाल है इस वक्त एक जो बड़ा रिसाला निकलता है वो आलमी राष्ट्रीय सहारा का महीने में एक उसके उसमें आपको कुछ थोड़ा बहुत मिल सकता है पढ़ने को बट इट्स स्टिल वेरी फार क्राई फ्रॉम द काइंड ऑफ जर्नलिज्म वी सॉ मौलाना आजाद का जो अलहलाल था या जो चिरा हसन हसरत या फैज अहमद फैज के रिसाले एडिट किया होते थे हमें उस कस्म की कोई चीज पब्लिक डोमेन में नजर नहीं आती नीच जर्नल्स एक का दुखा जरूर है लेकिन मैं इस वक्त नीच की बात नहीं करना चाहती हूँ ये बात को समेटते हुए मैं ये कहूंगी कि द लिंक बिटवीन मीडिया एंड लिटरेचर सर्वाइव बट इन एन इंटायरली डिफरेंट वे इंस्टेड ऑफ द मीडिया क्रिएटिंग अ स्पेस फॉर लिटरेचर विद इन इट और बींग सफिशेंटली इंस्पायर्ड बाई लिटरेचर टू अलाउ इन ओकेजनल ग्लिमर ऑफ इट 
we have instances of literature, especially fiction, being inspired by events. But it is more prurient or salacious or voyeuristic things that are happening. For example, Bhopal, Shaila Masood, when she was shot, Harper Collins instantly commissioned a quickie on her life. या जैसे का लाल की कमाल हुआ तो उसपे बेस फिल्म हुई या किताब हुई तो हम जब इंस्पायर होते हैं न्यूज़ से तो मुझे लगता ही है कि उसमें एक वॉयलेस्टिक एलिमेंट होता है एक एंड दिस एंड विद दिस टू ऑन अ स्लाइटली लेस ग्रिम नोट अगर हमें कहीं एक अच्छा उदाहरण मिलता है हैप्पी मैरिज बिटवी uh, many of you again would remember the last page of the Hindu which for a very long time carried his reportings of famine, of man-made famine, of hunger in Orissa. He neither glamorized it, he neither made it exotic, but these were extremely compelling reading, as compelling as something like John Steinbeck writing about the Great American Depression or so on. And what is more important is the fact that Penguin brought it together in the form of a book called uh, uh, Everyone Loves a Good Drought. That fact and the fact that the book is in circulation, it is being read, to my mind tells me that there are instances when these things, which okay, um, in the hands of inferior writers are bhakti adab, topical but in the hands of a gifted writer, it can rise above its time, it can rise above its immediate circumstance and then therefore not suffer from topicality. Oh, eco friendly, nature ke rakshak, main bhi hu nature. Sada ke the rak. Sir, aapko kya bolna hai? Jai Mata Di, let's rock ke lava. Definitely one song which I I think will beat is Sumrao Jan. Boy, kis gaane mein hogi heat aur kaun sa gaana karega sabko beat? Ye pata chalega. Mirchi top hundred mein ye countdown nahi count down hai. Suniye se 28 December se sham 7 se 9 ke beech Radio Mirchi 98.3 FM par. It's hot.